What's good? So we've done kind of the hype, getting excited, some of the big dogs because they got to eat. Let's go to a little bit more of the actual camp battles that are going on, which is what I would really like to do. But I know that you guys want the high end fluff pieces. Nobody wants to get down into the nitty gritty of shit and actually maybe get some value out of some of this because we only care about the top 24. Just but tell me what to do, man. Just tell me what Let's to get do. into the knee deep into some of these battles. These are going to be more like buy lows, you, you know, get as kickers in deals or trade for late, late fourths, thirds, whatever. You know, I don't like to get all willy nilly with with thirds, but and some of these guys, it'll be a little bit more. But we can start off with the Dallas Cowboys, since everybody loves the Cowboys. That battle for the third wide receiver. Is it Jalen Tolbert? Probably. So I feel like he's somebody who you can sneak into some trades here. He was he's was into his second year last year. Didn't do a whole lot. Uh, got got on the field a little bit there at the end of the season. Uh, but they have Jalen Brooks. Uh, and Ryan Flournoy, who some people really like. Uh, but there's going to be a battle there. And, and I think Tolbert has pole position. I think he's somebody, you know, who has good size. He's coming from South Alabama. The metrics were, were pretty good uh, on Jalen Tolbert. Sometimes it just takes a minute for people to develop. They're, they're real thirsty for a third guy. Brandon Cooks is out there, uh, uh, you know, probably going to, you know, perennially underrated, be their second. But getting up there in age and wasn't as productive last year. I mean, obviously, CD's great. Ferguson's fantastic. Just want to throw, you know, these are going to be guys to keep an eye on. This camp battle is going to be fun. I think Tolbert's going to end up being the guy. Any one of these guys are guys to add in your waiver wire, or if you're if you're getting trades done, if you can get Tolbert as a throw in, mm -hmm. um, I don't hate that at all because he would be my favorite to win this thing. But Florinoy could be a a good waiver pickup, and and I don't, you know, Jalen Brooks, I believe, is from South Carolina, so. You know, just just a battle to keep your eye on. That's what this is going to be about. So the next one for me is going to be the goddamn Jets. Um, <laughs> Shout out to Big Daddy. <laughs> they just drafted Corley. We're, we're thinking it's going to be Corley to go. But, you know, hard knocks last year. Xavier Gibson, week one, remember that punt return, win mm -hmm. the game. Uh, Gibson's got some juice. So it'll be an interesting battle to follow to keep locked in on. So it was. this is more of a PSA of add Gibson to stuff. Uh, Gibson you know, with a P. Don't don't Gibson. I'm not Gibson. Gibson. Just like Clampson. Exactly. Don't forget the P. <laughs> so Xavier Gibson sitting out there on a waiver wire. You could you could potentially scoop him up. He could he could honestly come out of here and, and win this battle for half the season, whole season. But he was a lot of fun, electric player. Corley, completely different style of play. And I think Corley will will, will get on the field and have a role. A third round draft pick by them, I believe. 65 you know, overall. It's Mike, a high second round. Mike Williams misses time from time to time. No. Lazard's out there. Not a whole lot of ironclad options after Garrett Wilson. Now, Tyler Conklin is somebody is going to be on my sleeper tight ends to absolutely pick up. So you throw him in in those throw in trades, especially if you're in tight end premium. That man, my man is about to slay it this year for free. Yeah. He, he did work last year in spots, like very startable, yeah, deep, just, deep, deep, tight end premium leagues. Right. He was startable week in a lot, in a lot of weeks. And but, you know, they terrible quarterback play. They weren't scoring mm -hmm. a whole lot of touchdowns. Uh, mm -hmm. That'll change with Aaron Rodgers. I think Tom Conklin's got a hold of that. That collarbone, though, I don't know. Tight end position uh, really strongly. And this isn't any shade on Corley. I just battle to watch out for. I think Gibson Gibson might get a little extra playing time. Throw him on the roster if you can. Scoop up Brownlee, too, if, if you got a deep, deep squad. You know, yeah. throw him on the taxi squad. Not not a bad play. Yeah, a little bit bigger battle here. Switching gears. Bucks, Palmer, Trey Palmer, and Jalen McMillan. If you've been fucking with us for a while, you know Jalen McMillan's my dog. I like Trey Palmer. Trey pa Guys like Trey Palmer and Trey Tucker were guys that were, hey, scoop him up at the end of the year and throw him on your, on your bench. Godwin was, you know, we didn't know what was going to happen with him and Trey Palmer played okay for them. I think he's, I, I just feel like McMillan offers so much more to the position than Trey Palmer does. Trey Palmer, good player. I like having him, throw him on the team. But, you know, this is this is going to be a battle to watch. And kind of in the vein of, of the last show that we did, that was the one before this about blowing up, I think McMillan's ADP is going to jump really high because I think he's winning this battle. He's 14-9. Right now in the FFD ADP, that's super flex tight end premium. I think that could be jumping up into the 12s. Obviously, I'd really like to see him run the slot, 
but they're saying Godwin's going to be in there. McMillan can be outside, but I think he's more projected to be a slot kind of guy. So that could favor Palmer a little bit. Hey, we want to get you down the field. But McMillan's also a really good player down the field. I just think McMillan's got the more diverse route tree and is just the better overall player and is going to come into this league and be, you know, not on the superstar level, but I think he's going to be a very, very good, very good productive wide receiver. If you can buy McMillan for a third and a fourth right now, I would I would do so. I think you can expect that value to go up for for McMillan there. So three seven in our rookie ADP here. Yeah. So so late third. That's super flex tight end premium. Throw a third and a fourth at that. See, probably see move if you back can, into the third. See if you can get it done. For those but who have late rookie drafts, shout out to y'all. McMillan's going to be somebody I'm battling for. I think he's going to get some camp hype, and I think he's going to win that battle. So, uh, And then White and Bucky, I don't know that there's necessarily a, a battle to be had here, but they're dying for a second guy, and Bucky, I feel like camp hype is, is going to get his value up a little bit from 15-7 uh, right now. I don't think there's necessarily a battle here. I think White is going to seed some carries to Bucky. I mean, White was a bona fide you know, stud workhorse last <laughs> oh, no. year. And White is an outstanding receiver. Mm-hmm. But I think I think Bucky's going to offer them something that they really like in the run game. And I think Bucky's hype's going to start building uh, here as, as the season, as the off season gets closer and closer to the regular season. Keep your eye on that. And, and I think Bucky, if, if, you know, you can get Bucky in a, in a kicker in a deal or you can trade a third straight up for Bucky, even though somebody might have just paid, you know, a late third for him or whatever. Um, a three and a four, just like we were talking about with McMillan. I'd rather have McMillan, but I think Bucky's going to end up getting uh, carving out a nice role and getting some camp hype here. So Bucky Irving, uh, a name to watch here. One of the bigger battles is is the quarterback battle in Las Vegas. I think there's there's some implications of fantasy success, maybe from the receiver position of. I think if Gardner Minshew wins this battle out, that it's probably best for all the fantasy assets potentially on this team or at least one or two of them but AOC they might say something and say hey this guy was decent as a rookie a, a pretty big gamer what a ridiculous photo <laughs> from Minshew but there's a, there's a, there's another pretty big camp battle to watch and could have big implications of what's going to happen kind of moving forward I forget even sometimes that those guys that the Raiders kind of have an open uh, spot so it's going to be a lot of fun to watch if Aiden had the same type of photo that would really He's trying extra hard there. You should. I think he came into a tough situation. And I don't think he played terrible. Minshew just seems like your stopgap kind of guy to keep morale maybe a little higher. So yeah. I think I think Minshew could, and that coach wants to keep his job. Right. Could could keep uh, Minshew will keep you around. He won't right. necessarily blow it. Keep Devontae happy if he's there. He'll feed him. He'll feed him. He'll feed uh, the number so one. I think I think that's a a good implication for your skills. For Vegas, if, if, if you skills. if Minshew edges that one out, uh, and then you know edges. I think I think really for Vegas in general, you're looking at battles all over the place. You know who's going to be that slot guy? Is it going to be Trey Tucker? Is he going to be your third guy out on the field? He he actually played really well uh, in some spots last year, and then you have the running re- running back room. Oh, uh, they've also added uh, Michael Gallup on that roster, so. We'll see where Gallup, if he can compete for some snaps. I mean, Jacoby, I think Jacoby and Adams, obviously, I think are penciled in. So we'll see where Gallup ends up on that roster. So just a couple of names to watch there and the quarterback battle and the running backs. Um, I, I think Zamir's going to be the guy. I think Madison will mix in. And then but I do think there'll be a little bit of lob love as, as a pass catcher. And he'll start to get a little more burn, a little more steam kind of building up here. And so, you know, just watch out for, for Dylan Lobb there. Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. Or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, and also our 2024 rookie draft kit, complete with rookie rankings, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. For all the psychos that are just in this all the time, this might not be for you, this part of this episode, but like we're trying to also remember that there's new dynasty players coming to this all day, every day. Uh, and there's some people who haven't, you know, been tracking this like you and I have. So we're going into training camp. We're going to look at some some battles here. Talked about it on the last show, the tight end room for the for the Chargers. Got Disley Hurst, Parham. Seems like Disley, uh, nice little cheap pickup there. 
And then the wide receiver room is very interesting over there. You have Quentin Johnston right now is is it's OK to buy him and just be, if somebody's giving him away for nothing because yeah, the they ADP just want to get like out 14 um, 14th round. I know it's not sexy and it's not popular, but, you know, it can happen. Um, I don't think he's a terrible player. We I don't knew think it was going to take a minute. I don't think know? he should have been playing as much as he it sucks. He got forced into playing as much as he got had to do last year. Yeah. You know, I, I love Lad McConkey. I think Lad's going to be end up being their guy fits what they're going to do. Josh Palmer's probably going to end up getting a little bit of hype. So I think their starting three are probably going to be those guys. Interesting to see that battle turn out. And, and Quentin Johnston could be somebody who you could get for cheap and, and hang on to and, and see him grow and develop with uh, this new regime that they have. Because I just feel like this regime changeover, obviously those guys had nothing to do with Quentin Johnston. I feel like everything that they're going to build moving forward is going to be so much better and so much different than what L.A. had going on previously, the Chargers out of uh, and I think that could be really good for Quentin Johnston. Let's get those hands sorted out a little bit from Quentin. No love for Palmer there? Oh, I think a lot of, I, th- I think Palmer, I, think I gave Palmer a, a little bit of a shout out. Palmer's a guy just like Quentin Johnston, who when we get in that 15th ish round, I uh, start looking at Josh Palmer for sure. I think Josh Palmer could have a huge role on this team as far as targets. You know, we, we think this is going to be a very run first oriented team, which I'm sure they will be. That's what they want to do. That's what Roman's done. That's what Harbaugh does. You may not have that luxury year one of being as good as you want to be and being able to just run all the time. You, you may have to pass a little more than anticipated, right? And Luckily I think for them, they got a decent quarterback. They got a really, really good quarterback. Josh Palmer probably gets slept on a little bit. This whole receiving core outside of Ladd, very obtainable, very, very gettable. And I think Palmer has already proved that he's a pretty good receiver. So you can get him as a kicker because I don't think anybody really cares about Josh Palmer at this point. Quentin Johnson might cost you a little something. I'm not I'm not saying pay a second for Quentin Johnston, but like if I could if I could throw a third around for the prospect of Quentin Johnson, and now some people say that that that's just killing a third round pick, I'll take the shot, man. I got a little bit more patience. I did some scouting on Quentin Johnston. There are some raw abilities there and some really fun stuff. It just needs to be honed and crafted. We knew it was know. gonna take a minute, you right. know. We knew that. Right. So he wasn't uh, ready. That Charger wide receiver room battle is, is going to be fun to kind of monitor. Uh, Saints, same thing. Wide receiver room. Shahid kind of wide open. The casuals probably aren't on the Shahid. They probably didn't read the reception perception of how good Rashid is. Or watch a bunch of Saints games. Or watch he's a bunch of Saints plays games. He's making plays makes He makes plays when, when they give him opportunities. It seems like he's going to have a lot of opportunities. So Rashid Shahid, I believe he's in there around the 15th-ish round here with the FFD ADP. Some later round guys, Rahid Shahid, 14-8, uh, right above Jalen McMillan. It'd be interesting to see how this, this kind of camp goes on. But A.T. Perry, Rahid Shahid, guys to keep your eye on. I know Shahid's probably got a little more steam than A.T. Perry, but A.T. didn't Perry play, was coming on at the end of the year, too. Didn't play terrible uh, in, in Making spots. plays in the end zone, looking nice, man. You got to scoop up A.T. Perry. There's not a whole lot going on over there for the Saints. So this is a receiving core and a battle to watch. And acquire either one of, uh, you know, Shahid, I, I'd be acquiring for, you know, thirds if I could. A.T. Perry, you know, if somebody wants to trade you for a fourth or, or kickers in a trade or Shahid is a nice kicker in a trade to, to get value back up to a little e- more even than kind of where you were. So next on the list, we're going to go real with quick. L- Perry's at 17, man. That's a that's a yeah huge value. there. Just we're going to go over free. over to Atlanta and, and just check out this battle. See how that kind of we got Mooney and we got Rondell Moore and then really there's there's nobody else uh, out there except for a lot of love for Casey Washington going on over there so a name to watch out for Casey Washington scoop him up with your free agent if you're able to acquisition Uh, I'm sure he didn't get drafted in, in your rookie drafts but Casey Washington getting some buzz over there I love Mooney here as the two. Old-time favorite of ours. R. Love I Mooney. I feel like, but a resurgence, a revival, a, a, an opportunity to bring right. it back. Absolutely love Mooney. He's somebody who, again, is in my late-round stabs all the time. Mooney and Wandell, two of my favorites right now in, in those later rounds to add you another wide receiver who I think could really give you some good startability in some weeks. Uh, but Rondell Moore has been written off, and, and this new offense that, that's coming in here uh, with, with Zach Robinson and... and Kirk D. Cousins. It is wide open, and although I love 
Mooney, Rondo could be the guy just as easily. Yeah, um, he's had some really nice spots with Arizona as well. Just couldn't put it all together and stay healthy. And right, he's an explosive guy, just shown like Mooney. Spots of right. flashing and, and yeah, th- there was that old meme where the guy put the duck down in the water and the duck took off and it was like, this reminds me of Rondell Moore off the right. line of scrimmage. And let's get that Rondell back. Still pretty young, wide open over there. So I like that. Yeah. So. You know, just just wanted to take you around the league a little bit. I mean, you know, you got Curtis Samuel and Shakir and Claypool kind of maybe battling. I don't know. There's a huge battle, but Claypool was getting a little bit of love there. Bust. With them for the Bills. So, you know, keep an eye on that. The Browns, I feel like are as their wide receiver, too, is undecided. So I feel like that's a really good battle to kind of keep your eye on. Obviously, traded for Judy. In the offseason, they traded for uh, Elijah Moore. The season before that, they drafted Seti Till. In the past year, they, they picked up Thrash. So they got some good guys in waiting. You know, Moore's had some decent spots. Judy's had some okay spots. Which guy's going to turn it on? I think there's a nice little battle here for who's going to end up being uh, the wide receiver, two for the Cleveland Browns in this upcoming season. So 13-2 for the Jerry Judy ADP. Still Elijah pretty Moore's young. probably free. Yeah, he's free. Can't find him. Nope. We have up to what is this twenty rounds and, and no 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 Elijah Moore who really fell really fell off there and 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 really had some okay games and they were kind of like scheming him a little bit and then you know just didn't quite work out so nice little camp battle to watch there and then you know thrash somebody as a UDF or a undrafted player not in the NFL draft but maybe in your draft that you should be looking out for to scoop up uh, Seti Till if people are out on him. I think he uh, he could be very interesting, and maybe he ends up being their their workhorse number two. He's a big athletic guy out of out of Tennessee who sat around a good bit last year. But Cedric Tillman, very very interesting player Shout out there. To Matt Foreman. Shout out to Matt Foreman. Uh, we we'll go through a little bit of running back rooms here. We got Zeke and Dallas and Rico Dowdle. That's a battle to watch. I hope Rico comes out on top there. Got a lot of Rico for yeah. free. Yeah. Let's see Rico get a shot here. But it, it seems like you'll have a. A committee there and uh, you know obviously they got deuce vaughn over there as well but rico and zeke battle and an uh, something to keep an eye on rico is somebody who i draft almost every single time you can get him in like the 15th 16th round this is a super flex tight end premium but you know we're getting him at, at 17 17 one, one man. um and a guy who could have a shot at being uh the workhorse for the dallas cowboys right i mean zeke didn't look terrible last year and, and is familiar with what's going on over there and maybe he is going to be the lead guy. But Rico, I think, is going to get plenty of opportunity. Obviously, been in the league for a few years and been on Dallas for a few years. At this point, he's free. I've been getting him in a lot of trades in that third and fourth round in rookie drafts. Can move back a little bit and pick up Rico Dowdle from somebody. And that's a guy who could be all the, like, by the end of camp, if if he's getting the, not like, that could be a second round pick. That could be a two, three swap for you. Or somehow you could finagle a second round pick out of, Somebody who wants the Dallas Cowboy running back, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, and I, I, I know, never in your league. You want to be in a league with this guy? Shut up. <laughs> um, it happens. I, so go. Hey, I, I, every guy that comes out and says that, like, oh, these are, this has never happened. Show me one trade. Show me, go, go offer that for one thing. And, and, and I'm able to kill them with kindness, show them some examples, and, and they usually come off that opinion. They're like, yeah. oh, I know. I guess it's. My my opinion doesn't correlate to every single dynasty fantasy right. football player in the world. And right. and and, and I'll how many this, leagues are you in where that trade goes down? You're like, damn it, that was a terrible trade. Why didn't I send that? Right. You see, and and that happens more and more in your home leagues where you see these off balance trades where it's heavily in one favor of of another person. And and you also see it in your trade negotiations when you're trying to acquire somebody, you're trying to put out feelers, and that person wants the world for that player because their players are all much better than yours. And then they'll go trade that player for something stupid to somebody else. And the advice for that is to not get discouraged, to not uh, be a jerk, to kill them with kindness. And eventually, you'll be able to get one of those trades with that person whose values are so skewed. But it, it, it becomes in your favor that time, right? right. So you just got to keep at it. Don't be, I, I, I have to take my own advice. Don't be a jerk. I have to delete what I'm writing. I have to back out of the chat because <laughs> I want to be like, ah, you know, just calm down. Relax. Kill him with kindness. Don't be rude. Don't be a jerk because you might lose a trade, a potential trade partner in the future. And you don't want to do that. You just want to be cordially annoying with the offers. And I mean, if you see anybody put a player on the trade block that you like, you got to immediately send an offer, you know? That's one of the mistakes to not 
make. I'm I'm been developing a don't make these mistakes <laughs> video for like a year. Don't let someone on the trade block go by without an offer sent. If you like that guy and you saw him put him on the trade block, their value just went down because they put him on the trade block. You know, you know they want to sell him. So go go send an offer. But don't get discouraged because your values are off and and you know. Don't be don't be a jerk. Obviously, not everybody thinks like you, and, and every league is different, and there's a lot of different circumstances. So we're just we're, we can't pull things out of thin air for your specific league and your specific situation. We're just trying to inform you with a bunch of knowledge. You go do with it with you can what you can. You know. Right. All right. Let's let's get back to one or two more, and then we'll get out of here. Like I said, this episode may not be for everybody, not for the hardos and everything, but one of the hardos. Yeah, the people who are really aggressive in uh, dynasty fantasy football. I would feel like it would be for them. This is more of like a... Well, I, I, I mostly want to get the casuals back in who's where and, and, and what position. So they have an idea of... The casuals what, what, don't what care to, about these what late to round monitor. players. Well, this is what they, they should... They need to have somebody tell them about them so they can be adding these guys uh, for free or in trades. Just give me the top 24, um, man. If it ain't which, the top which, 24. Which we, we did a bunch of that. Um, that's we all do, anybody does. We do do a bunch of that. Oh, for sure. That's because that's do. what it works. That's why. That's why we're just having a little bit of fun with this show um, and and bringing some some guys to light and some battles to light. Colby Parkinson for the Raider or for the uh, for the Rams. There, uh, you know, Tyler Higby has been out there a ton for the Rams, but they they picked up uh, Parkinson. They had Davis Allen from Clemson, who you know had had a game or two that was decent. But go Tigers! Parkinson could be a, a late round tight end guy that that you need. Because I'm always so salty, how many go Tigers I get to drop? But it's like they're all over the place. I mean, what? I got a garnet hat on. I mean, gosh dang. Yeah, um, and, we'll, and we'll get out of here uh, on this note. Uh, Ty Chandler uh, for the Vikings. Aaron Jones oft injured. Ty Chandler was was good at the back end of last year. Um, I think. Either way, Chandler's going to have some standalone value, and he's got big upside uh, to potentially get a role if Aaron Jones has a hamstring injury, which we've seen that about one million times uh, in his career. Oft Ty, injured. <laughs> Ty Chandler, somebody has throw-ins or, or a little cheap trade target when you're getting a kicker in a trade where somebody might say, oh, Aaron Jones came and ruined everything for Ty Chandler, but just a reminder of, of, of Ty Chandler. So... Like I said, lots of information on here of, of maybe some deeper stuff and some battles to keep your eye on. But just wanted to, as training camp starts, you know, some some stuff to uh, focus in on and, and look for there. So you got anything else? I'm good. All right. Well, let's get out of here. Appreciate you all for joining us. You Sorry. know, if you're if you're mad at the video content, you know, you clicked on it. I mean, I don't. Yeah. And we got a million really deep, aggressive conversations that. uh for your pleasure so and we get more of that in over on the patreon you know we're trying to we're trying to do what the youtube audience wants over here and and over on the patreon it's much more free-flowing this one wasn't for the youtube audience no <laughs> no not necessarily but uh we do a lot of that and and there's more of this free-form discussion you know we're just trying to have a conversation we're trying to inform people you know we have our rankings we have what we think are values it doesn't apply to everyone it doesn't apply to every league you should be doing your own research. You should be do making your own opinions. You just just taking the knowledge, taking the information that we're trying to give you. Form your own opinion. Do what you got to do. If you feel it in your plums, you know, if you got to have this guy, if you, ah, why do you have this guy so low? He gets so good. Well, then take that man. You know, you're not gonna be able to live with yourself if you don't. So, yeah. you know, appreciate y'all joining us. Make sure you hit like, subscribe, leave us with a comment, regardless of uh, negativity or not. It helps the algorithm. We appreciate you. Go over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty. Join the $5 holler. Get access to extra shows. Get access to the paid parts of Discord, which, you know, roster reviews and ADP and all that stuff. If you're not up for signing up for that, you can go over there and join a free membership and get uh, access to a couple of the free Discord channels. Make sure you're on, if you're listening to the podcast, please, 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 let me get that five-star review. Just tap it. All you got to do it. is tap it. Need it. So, appreciate y'all. We'll see you next time. Peace.